I just arrived at my hotel in Seattle and uh, greeted by some 49ers roster moves and, of course, their injury report. Uh, by the way, on my flight from Oakland to SeaTac, a lot of 49er fans on that flight. So there's always a good representation of 49er fans up here in Seattle. So uh, I'm expecting Thursday night will be more of the same. Before I get to the injury report and everything else, um, here's what I'm going to try to do on Thursday morning is if you leave a comment or a question at the bottom of this post, I will answer it. So I'll have basically a mail bag of questions submitted by you. Uh, if you're a subscriber and you comment, ask a question, I'll try to answer it uh, tomorrow before I head to the stadium for the 515 kickoff. I believe that's what time it is. Okay, so as far as the injury report goes, um, 49ers, some good news and some bad news. Uh, the good news, if we want to do that first, is that complete uh, practice, full practice for Jair Brown, Jacob Cowing, and then the two big ones, George Kittle and Fred Warner. So those four players are not even listed on the injury report for this game against the Seattle Seahawks. However, they did rule four players out of action for this game, including Jordan Elliott, defensive tackle. Knee injury, he's been moved into the starting lineup after Javon Hargrave's season-ending injury, uh, the torn tricep. So uh, Jordan Elliott will not play in this game. Expect the 49ers to elevate a defensive tackle from the practice squad. That could be T.Y. McGill. It could be Evan Anderson. One of the things that kind of went untalked about, at least from me, after the game in against the Arizona Cardinals was that the 49ers opted to go with T.Y. McGill over Evan Anderson, Evan Anderson, the rookie, undrafted rookie. He was active for the game against the Patriots. He wasn't for the game against the Cardinals, but T.Y. McGill was. So I would assume it'll come down to one of those two players getting the elevation up from the practice squad. Uh, Demetrius Flanagan fouls, uh, no surprise there. He's out with a calf injury. And then uh, the two guys that we knew about as well, Talano Hufanga out with the wrist injury, torn ligaments in his wrist. And the Fortiners actually did place him on injured reserve on Wednesday. And then Jake Moody is out with the right high ankle sprain. Fortiners have signed Matthew Wright, the veteran uh, kicker who's bounced around a little bit, has 47 career field goal attempts. He's made 40 of them. He will be wearing number 35 for the 49ers and kicking on Thursday night. So um, the 49ers did, as I mentioned, put Talano Hufanga, on injured reserve, and they promoted tight end Braden Willis from the practice squad to the 53 man roster. So, Braden Willis uh, is a guy that you know he's a seventh round draft pick in 2023, has appeared in eight regular season games and three postseason games for the 49ers, has yet to catch a pass for this team. So, uh, he will come in as the fourth tight end for the 49ers, but mostly out there to play special teams. So on the 49ers depth chart with George Kittle, a full go for this game, obviously he's a starter. Then it's Eric Saubert, Jake Tongas, and then Braden Willis. Okay. So that's where the 49ers stand right now, as far as where they are from the roster standpoint, again, Malik Mustafa, the rookie will step in to the starting role as he did um, anytime now after the first two games when George Odom was the guy who started for Talano Hufanga, anytime the 49ers have needed someone in place of Hufanga, it's been Malik Mustafa. So week three, Hufanga played. He missed the next game against um, the Patriots with an ankle injury. And so it was Mustafa who started that game and by and large played very well. And then last week when Hufanga went out with the wrist injury, it was Mustafa. So looks like it's going to be uh, Malik Mustafa's job now for the foreseeable future, at least for four games, five games, whatever uh, it, it is with the 49ers. Uh, as far as Jordan Elliott exiting the lineup with the knee injury, uh, 49ers earlier um, on, well, a week ago, put uh, Yitor Grossmatos on injured reserve. So, they have three guys who are out with injuries, two on injured reserve, Gross Matos and Hargrave. So Jordan Elliott, 
uh, makes the 49ers dip further down into their depth chart. So it's going to be uh, Kevin Givens, probably the starter at that position moving forward. Um, a couple of things, we've talked a lot about the 49ers red zone, and the red zone has not been good for this team. And in fact, I mean, they were number one in the league last year, scoring touchdowns 68% of the time they got inside the red zone. This year, they're down to 41%, and that ranks 29th in the league. What's kind of interesting is that the 49ers have actually been better getting inside the red, red zone. They've just been worse once they've gotten there. And then in 2023, when they were in first and goal situations, they were fourth in the league scoring touchdowns 83% of the time. And this year, they're 31st in the league. All but only one team is worse than them, scoring touchdowns just 50% of the times when it gets into those, those goal-to-go situations. Now, it hasn't been all just bad news for the 49ers offense. One of the, the more interesting things is, I mean, they are they have been moving the ball. They've been moving the chains, but they just haven't been able to punch it in once they get down there. And so the 49ers are actually first in the league as far as fewest three and out possessions. So this year they've had 48 drives and only four three and outs. So, it, you know, the, the offense hasn't bogged down necessarily. And of course, the last game they played against the Cardinals, it was. Uh, you know, in the second half, they had four possessions. They moved the ball in each of those possessions a little bit, but then the drive stalled with two interceptions, one fumble, and then a turnover on downs when they opted not to go for the field goal because Mitch Wisnowski was out of his range after uh, they took a sack. So anyway, 48 drives, only four three and outs, and the percentage of three and out drives is a league best. 8.3%. Where the Niners are second in the league in first downs behind only the Baltimore Ravens. So as I talked about uh, on the video I dropped earlier about the Baltimore Ravens, big game for Brock Purdy as I sit down to do my five to watch in this game. I'll probably uh, post that in the morning, but Brock Purdy certainly going to be one of those guys when you take into consideration that last year, his worst game, was the four interception game against the Baltimore Ravens. Ravens seem to have things figured out. Of course, also a lot of talent on that Ravens defense, but uh, the Seattle Seahawks moved on from Pete Carroll in the offseason, and they hire Mike McDonald, who was the former Ravens defensive coordinator. So once again, what I'll try to do tomorrow morning, Thursday morning before the game, before I walk uh, downtown Seattle to the stadium, is to post kind of a Q&A a mailbag thing based on the comments, the questions that I get right here under this post. So feel free. I'll try to answer as many as possible. I'll probably breeze through them if there are a lot of them, but I will see every question and I'll try to respond to as many as possible. So leave it here. Ask If you're a subscriber, leave the comment, the question, and I'll respond. And in the meantime, like and everything else. So that's it. For now, kind of bringing you up to date on the 49ers roster situation and their injury report as, uh, well, I, don't, I don't think I gave you the entire injury report, did I? So in addition to the guys who are out, Jordan Elliott, Flanagan Fowles, Hufanga, and Moody, 49ers also list two players as questionable for this game, Chris Conley with an oblique and Charvarius Ward with the knee injury. And for both Conley and Ward, they went through limited practice on Wednesday. And so the guys who are fully cleared, who have been on the injury report, but who are going to play in this game, Jair Brown, Jacob Cowing, George Kittle, and Fred Warner. So that's the latest from 49er land. Well, not actually 49er land. I'm up in Seattle Seahawks land, but that's the latest from the 49ers. That's it for now. And uh, I'll check back in tomorrow with answers to your questions or maybe comments to your comments.